5 seconds from now. The facts and circumstances giving rise to this case are that the petitioner claimed to be in exclusive possession of the land in respect of which civil suit number 810 of 2000 was filed before additional civil judge Ranga district praying for perpetual injunction by Dr. Rao against the petitioner and another from entering into the suit land. Application filed for interim relief in the said suit stood dismissed, being aggrieved the plaintiff therein preferred CMA number 180 of 2000 and the same was also dismissed. Two other suits were filed in respect of the same property impleding the petitioner also as the defendant in one of the suits that is OS number 875. Three of section of 2003, the trial court granted temporary injunction against the petitioner. Being aggrieved, petitioner preferred the CMA number 64 of 2003, which was dismissed by the appellate court. Respondent number four, wide order dated 10th August 2004. Petitioner filed an application dated 15th November 2004 under Section 6 of the RTI Act before the Administrative Officer. Come Assistant State Public Information Officer Respondent Number 1 seeking information to the queries mentioned therein. The said application was rejected, wide order dated 23rd November 2004 and an appeal against the said order was also dismissed, wide order dated 20th January 2005. Second appeal against the said order was also dismissed by the Andhra Pradesh State Information Commission, wide order. The petitioner challenged the said order before the High Court seeking a direction to the respondent number one to furnish the required information immediately. The appellant was convicted by the trial court under section 306 IPC on the allegation that his farm labor committed suicide because of the harassment meted out to him by the appellant. The prosecution case was that the appellant two days prior to the incident leveled an allegation of theft of ornaments against the deceased that the appellant had also demanded from the deceased rupees 7000 which was given to him as advance at the time when he was kept in employment. The conviction was affirmed by the High Court. In the instant appeal filed by the accused, it was contended for the appellant that the conviction of the appellant was unsustainable as no ingredients of offence punishable under Section 306 IPC were made out. Abatement involved a mental process of instigating a person or intentionally aiding a person in doing of a thing without a positive act on the part of the accused to instigate or aid in committing suicide, conviction cannot be sustained. The intention of the legislature and the ratio of the cases decided by this court is clear that in order to convict a person under section 306 IPC, there has to be a clear mens rea to commit the offence. It also requires an active act or direct act which led the deceased to commit suicide seeing no option and this act must have been intended to push the deceased into such a position that he committed suicide. In the instant case, the deceased was undoubtedly hypersensitive to ordinary petulance, discord and differences which happen in day-to-day -day life. Human sensitivity of each individual differs from the other. Different people behave differently in the same situation. In the light of the provisions of law and the settled legal positions crystallized by a series of judgments of this court, the conviction of the appellant cannot be sustained. The word suicide in itself is nowhere defined in the Indian Penal Code. However, its meaning and import is well known and requires no explanation. 
Sui means self and side means killing, thus implying an act of self-killing. In short, a person committing suicide must commit it by himself irrespective of the means employed by him in achieving his object of killing himself. Suicide by itself is not an office offense under either English law or Indian criminal law. Stop. Hello aspirants, please subscribe to my channel to get all the dictations of the latest judgments of High Courts and Supreme Court. Thank you.